Um, next up, we have Vaibhav Chabra, who's the leader of Maker Asylum in India. Um, Vaibhav, are you here? Hi, I'm here. Thank you, everyone, for having me. Uh, I'm tuning in from uh, Goa in India. Uh, run a makerspace over here called Makers Asylum. Uh, just a quick background. Uh, we're a community makerspace that started about eight years back uh, to create a space for people to share tools and make things uh, in Mumbai and then slowly, slowly moved around quite a bit and finally settled over here in Goa uh, about last year in the middle of the pandemic. Uh, last year when the pandemic hit, uh, we, were, we sort of quarantined ourselves in the lab instead of going back home and started working a lot on COVID relief. So we made uh, a million face shields in a matter of 49 days through a distributed network of other labs that we were able to activate and sort of share designs, share, share ideas and quickly respond and uh, were able to uh, sort of open source designs, make face shields uh, and scale them up quite quickly. And then we also worked on respirators and uh, rebreather masks. Uh, we did not work on ventilators. A lot of you guys were talking about that. But this year we've been working on, uh, uh, this year the problem has been very, very severe in terms of oxygen in India. And uh, so we got together and we started building these, the oxygen concentrators, uh, based on a few of the open source designs on the OxyKit and a few others. And then we've sort of developed them much further now uh, using locally available parts. And at the same time, focused on a uh, uh, few of the problems that we have specific to India, like I think uh, the team before was talking about uh, moisture and a few other things, which is exactly the kind of stuff that we're tackling with over here, being on the coastal belt of India. And we got some really great insights by actually a dive center over here that was able to sort of uh, give us some great inputs enough we can uh, solve that, uh, at least uh, reduce that issue. Uh, using a desiccant chamber and using alumina based zeolites. That's what we used along with the moisture separator and cooling coil that you can see over here. Uh, this, uh, that's Anul, by the way. Anul is the co-founder and at the hey. same time, uh, the master maker. <laughs> We've been uh, building these for uh, now about two weeks over here. Uh, we'll run it for you guys and show you a demo. But I also wanted to point out the way that this is being done is that uh, through the M19 collective. So uh, last year when we were building the shields, we sort of started this collective called the M19 collective. So uh, that uh, last year, 42 cities, towns and villages and labs joined uh, the M19 initiative. And we were able to sort of uh, manufacture in a decentralized uh, and a distributed manner. Uh, this year, however, the collective has gone much stronger. Now we have over 150 labs and over 600 people. And uh, the University of Cambridge uh, Center for uh, Distributed Manufacturing has come on board. MIT Fab Lab, uh, Fab Foundation has come on board. European Union has come on board. So quite a few exciting people have come on board to be able to also look into uh, uh, quality. Um, uh, so looking into some very interesting elements of distributed manufacturing, and especially of medical devices around the QC and the QA and how we can scale products like these and others, uh, especially medical devices to uh, other communities, other citizens, other labs, other uh, small manufacturers so that they have certain ranges where they can play with uh, and be able to sort of use local resources, but within certain specs, be able to create these. Uh, and uh, so we're doing a bunch of work over there as well to be able to uh, continue to develop that decentralized distributed manufacturing ecosystem around in India so that uh, uh, whenever there are products or other problems that come in, and we saw that last year, especially with ventilators last year, and this year with oxygen concentrators, how do you quickly scale and especially scale in a context which is more local and which is more relevant to the needs of the environment? Uh, so anything else, Anil, do you want to say? They are pretty localized, especially with respect to weather conditions, making uh, a lot of the imported uh, concentrators non-functional. Uh, so stuff like moisture separation and so on become extremely important. I think that is a key challenge that we've been trying to solve over here. We're working on many different designs, uh, which can be, uh, let's say, replicated 
still work in progress, but as of now, we are getting up for 15 LPM at over 94%. So that's a good start, I'd say. Yeah, we'll uh, run the system for you, but it's a little loud, obviously. So we can uh, do the talking before and then run the system. One second. Um, just to add before we start is, uh, uh, what, you just pointed out a good point. So, moisture. moisture. Voice no, being the uh, issue and uh, the, the uh, oh yeah the Chinese import. So on that note, I actually want to show you this because uh, I think Diana, you guys also talked about it. But so we have doctors sending us all of these Chinese units that we've been getting because all of them are failing in India. So units have been imported from United States, from China, and what's happening is all of them are failing. We have requests from hospitals in South India and Goa and other places yeah, where they have over 100 units, one hospital and another hospital wanted to give us 3000 units to fix. So there are so many of these oxygen concentrators that have been bought in and uh, they're all, uh, the zeolite is getting shot instantaneously because the moisture levels are so high. So the moment you exp uh, expose that kind of uh, moisture to the zeolite, the zeolite just becomes into cake and uh, you're not getting any oxygen out after that. And they're all getting the same error, error zero ER02 or whatever, saying that oxygen level has dropped. And uh, so that's the problem that we've been tackling with. We've gotten to a nice spot now. We're uh, uh, gonna be releasing all the designs uh, th uh, tomorrow, hopefully, uh, tomorrow day after. Uh, the new bill of materials, we'll be sharing all, uh, we're making videos on how to make them. We're making, uh, 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 there is obviously a GitHub a repository with all the uh, codes and everything. But, and uh, most importantly, yes, we are making all the DIY videos and the documentation in local languages so that it's easier for people across India to be able to replicate and understand at least how they work because uh, it's important because this time the problem has gone to the villages of India. Uh, they don't speak English. They don't speak uh, Hindi as well, they speak different languages. And it's important that the problem be localized, even if they don't make them, but at least they know how to repair them and they know how to fix them because the pieces are reaching that. That's important. Secondly, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So I'll just run this because I think I'm out of time, uh, but yeah. And show you guys uh, the full running. So, okay, so and we'll switch on the pressure. So. Uh, currently, we're using a two camp, uh, two uh, compressor system. This is one compressor; it doesn't work that much. So, we're actually using uh, uh, this guy, which is actually two uh, motors instead of one motor because we need more pressure. Uh, so, we will be adding another motor over here. Tank is not required, so we won't be using a tank. So, you can see the pressure comes in. We have a moisture separator at the back, which actually collects all the water. But before that, it goes to the cooling coils. Yeah. So the cooling, so the pressure comes from the compressor, goes into the cooling coils. They are air cooled. They're in helical formation, both of them. That sort of the air is cooled. From there, it goes into the moisture separator at the back that collects all the water. So it takes out most of the water. By doing this, we're able to take down the moisture level from 85%, uh, which is ambient, to about 40%. Sorry? No, just with these two. Yeah, just with these two. Then after that, we have a desiccant chamber. That is, we call the desiccant chamber. Inside that, we have uh, alumina-based zeolite currently, uh, which uh, was advised to us by a local dive center, which works really well. Using this, we are able to take down uh, the moisture concentration down to about four or three, three to four, uh, uh, 3% humidity. That's how low we should be, and that's how low we're getting. Uh, after after the after the desiccant chamber, it goes in uh, directly into the sieves, where it's filtered, and the nitrogen is removed. And now you can see, uh, currently we're getting 97%. Uh, Oxygen concentration, 97.2, uh, and we have five LPM. I can increase that up. Let's say about maybe nine and 10, 
and uh, this will take some time, but we'll be around one second. Yeah. So now the uh, oxygen concentration will drop, but it should stabilize somewhere by about between 85 and 90 eventually. Yeah. Anyway, right now it's dropping a little bit. It's going to stabilize somewhere in about a few minutes. Let's see. Take some time. Okay, Vibe Bob, that looks great. We're just sort of um, running tight for time, but um, yeah, it looks amazing. What you guys are doing is great work, um, especially around localization and um, yeah. So there's a couple of questions here about the desiccant chamber. Do you know how long it uh, is lasting for and um, what kind of desiccant were you using? So we're using alumina based zeolite currently. It's uh, the first, uh, so we tested out the first batch, which lasted us about one week. Uh, and uh, running about three to four hours a day at least uh, for trials at the moment. Uh, but to be honest, uh, we need to do that test properly. That how long exactly does the fresh batch of uh, desiccant last for? is something that we're working on because we just got the machines working a few days back. We were hit by a cyclone in India. Uh, so we got a little caught up and now we've managed to get the oxygen concentrators and now we need to test the desiccant, yes. Great, awesome. Um, well, thanks for your presentation. It was really great to see and um, good luck with your project.